Well, we'd been there the, the year before, um, same venue, sa same opposition, and we prepared, the, I think, in exactly the, the same way, same hotel, um, our same training preparations, and as I say, everything was, was normal. We, we just got up and got our normal timings for, for eating and leaving the, the hotel to get to the ground. Um, there was nothing, n nothing that was apparent that was any different from the year before. When the game was called off, uh, everybody got changed, went upstairs, met up with the wives. Um, the television was on and um, they were going through what had happened. Um, and really that was the only time that we became fully fully aware of what, what had gone on because you get, when you're down in amongst it, you get conflicting stories. So I think for me that was the, the time that it became clearer exactly what had happened. Um, and in the journey back, there was there was no conversation whatsoever on the bus. It was it was uh, everyone was was totally taken aback by what had happened. Uh, I think the players were absolutely magnificent, and and what they did, obviously, different people react in different ways to, and they they grieve in different ways. And the players, uh, there was some did more than others, but then they mean to say that it affected them uh, more than the other guys. Some people just aren't strong enough and capable enough, and don't have the the personality to go to go along and do what a lot of people did, but that's not a problem. They, everyone did what they possibly could. The wives were magnificent. They were in and amongst it and serving them tea and that actually became a bit of a tear in the, the, what is now the Carlsberg Lounge. Um, but maybe maybe everyone could have done me a bit of counselling at the time, but at that particular moment, um, everyone, I'm sure it was there, I'm sure it was on offer. Um, but Nobody took it, so, uh, as I say, maybe in hindsight, they would have, but I don't know, I don't know if anybody's been too badly affected. Certainly the players were not affected as badly as the, the families were that lost someone in, in the, at the game. Oh, well, I think it taught you the value of your life, really. Um, football was very, very important, but for two or three weeks after Hillsborough, it became unimportant, um, the most important part of that time were the people's lives and uh, the people who had lost people, they had to, they were the ones that made the decision whether we went back to play or whether we didn't and after it was decided we went ahead to play then obviously we, we had to do our best and when we went to Celtic Park for the first game afterwards it was an unbelievable occasion and the first competitive game uh, going back to Goodison, I think that was equally fitting as well. Uh, to finish the season with the FA Cup uh, obviously, meant a great deal uh, to a great, uh, a great deal of people, really. I would have thought there's been um, many arguments put forward, but they only turned up to watch a football match. But it was supposed to be, it was organised by the football association, who dictated the ground, dictated the, the, the kick-off time, dictated what end the clubs were at. They put the organisation in charge, which was the police. Um, so something went wrong. I mean, it was everything was perfect the year before, so something went wrong somewhere. Um, and if somebody just stood up and made themselves accountable for it, then I'm sure the families would would rest quite happily in that. I mean, that, they're not looking for a great deal other than somebody to be a portion with the with the blame or responsibility for for what happened. The supporters got criticised a little bit for, for turning up late, but I don't see how they can be criticised for turning up late when you see the roadworks that were on the motorways at, uh, at that time. We just did delayed the match. If it was half an hour or an hour, what difference does it make? It had been done before, the late kick-offs, and it could have been done again. Um, but I think, that's, I think that's all they want, just someone to say, look, it was, our, it was our fault and we should have done better. I think they'd be happy with that. Uh, as I said before, the most important part of Hillsborough are the families and um, in the immediate aftermath and, and even now. They're the ones that are more important than, than anything that's involved there. I mean, they're, whoever they lost in that, in that day were, were only there to watch a football match. Uh, 
and they were hoping to come back uh, safe and sound, but they never did it. And for them, it must be horrific. They must go through it many, many times, uh, every day of the year. So, as I say, I think they're, more, they're the most important thing. Uh, and probably, probably uh, the legacy that has been left from there is the fact that there's so many brilliant stadiums now. Uh, through the Taylor Report, after uh, what happened, and uh, for that to be a legacy, and then fine, that's at least. Uh, there's been something that, that's been left there to say, well, the people never lost their lives for, for, for nothing. They've been, it's been proven that although people still would like to stand uh, on a terracing, I think uh, by far the safest way is to sit and watch a game. And I think that's a, that's a fantastic legacy for them, albeit a little bit too late. I've got a ticket for the West Stand. So I go, I go past the Leppings Lane and, and I, I remember at the time thinking there was no stewards, there was no one there because I wanted to know where I got to my seats. I was thinking, where's no stewards? It's a bit weird, isn't it? I thought, well, maybe it was near kickoff, you know, it's, they, they, they're watching the match. And then, of course, we went past the, 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 the fateful tunnel and uh, I remember all the fans were streaming in there. And I went past and went up to me, to my seat with my mates. And then as the game started, I remember kept looking at the Leppings Lane and thinking that the whole central pens, look, they just looked like sardines packed in, ridiculous. You, you, you could see either side, you know, the, the kind of semi, well, not empty, but you could see the kind of the gaps and you thought, that's weird, what, that's weird is going on. There was, a, there was a stillness about it with police walking past, by the way, police walking in front of it with a police, police control room on top of it, CCTV cameras with full Zoom facilities. Um, you never thought that that would be allowed to happen, you know, under the eyes of, of, of the police. But you never assumed that anyone had, de had died until you see the fans going underneath you with the ab ripped advertising holdings, which become stretchers, and the fans and coats over faces. And once I see coats over faces, you think the worst. And remember, in those days, nobody had mobiles. Um, it, was, it was way before mobiles, so you'd arrange to meet at, at, at your other mates at the car because some of us were in different situations, in different parts of the ground. And I always remember walking up the hill and there was a fella, a big, big Liverpool fan, butting the top of his car, screaming, you're not blaming us this time. You're not blaming us this time.